Okay, welcome back to a new math tutorial. Uh, in this video, I would like to give you an example of a typical optimization problem. Yeah? So the exercise that we want to well, that we want to have a look at now uh, is the following. Um, the text says calculate the optimal radius of a soda can to minimize the amount of required material. Yeah? So not only is this a very common optimization problem, we had to calculate this, for example, during our school time, and you can find such a such a question in many textbooks. Yeah, it is also it has also a practical meaning. Yeah, so let's suppose you are, for example, a company that produces soda cans, and uh, you want to get as much profit as possible from that, which means that at the end you have to reduce the amount of required material as much as you can. Yeah, and uh, therefore it, it's very interesting to see that there is actually a radius for which you get the minimum amount of required material yeah, and which means that there is a certain ratio between the radius and the height and this ratio we want to calculate now. And then you will see that in reality the, the soda cans that you can buy, buy in the market do not obey this ratio yeah? and uh, this, uh, this we will go now through uh, it step by step. So as I said this is an extremum problem. Uh, or called optimization problem. Both words can be used. And uh, I think I will stick to the to the second version, optimization problem. So the first thing which we will do, of course, is to draw our tin. Um, and uh, maybe it will look like that. We can assume that this is a perfect cylinder for the time being. Um, and of course, uh, in, in reality, it is in principle a, a perfect cylinder. So now of course we have our height h, yeah, which is the height of the tin, and we have here our radius r, um, which is the radius of our tin. Yeah. And uh, now we have to follow a few steps. So the the surface um, the, the surface area, yeah, let's call that a, um, this is actually the a measure for the material yeah so it's directly correlated to that the larger the surface the more material you you need yeah so um, a is actually the value that we want to minimize so in order to do that we have to first write down something which is called first order condition yeah and as i said this is true for every extremum and optimization problem that first you have to write down this condition and this condition is of course in this case a function a, which includes the height and the radius uh, the, uh, of, of this uh, tin that we have now, of this can which we have drawn here. So in this case, um, the, the, the area, the surface of our tin is of course the two times the area of these circles which we have drawn here, plus the, the mantle of our cylinder. So what we can write here is uh, two times pr square. This is the um, area of these circles plus 2 pi r h, which is the surface of our mantle. Yeah, and then you can see the problem here is that you have actually two variables existing in this equation. Yeah, one is r and one is h. So at the moment, how the condition is written down, we cannot do anything with that. So what we have to do, we have to also write down. Uh, second order uh, condition and um, this has to be related to something which is constant because we want to replace one of these values r or h with that so of course we could replace r but this is more complicated because we have here an r square and here we have a linear dependency but there's only one term where h is included yeah? so we want to replace later uh, this part here this h and the second order condition that we have to insert, as I said, it has to be related to something which is constant. And the thing which is constant is, of course, the volume, yeah? because the volume does not change. We want to have it for a fixed volume, which means that we have to write down V equal, and then we have to write down the formula for the volume of our can, of our um, cylinder. So this is, of course, pi r square, which is the area of our, uh, of our um, circles again times the height h. 
So now we we have a linear dependency between v and h, yeah, and uh, this is already what we want to have because now we can directly uh, insert this into our first order condition. And this we can do. Maybe I will create a new page for that. Um, yeah. So as I said, we want to insert uh, this into into a in into our first order condition. So um, this is very simple. So actually, one of the r's cancels out cancels out here, and we get then one r in the denominator, and uh, this one pi also cancels out. Yeah. So when we do that, uh, we it turns out that at the end we get a equal two pi r square plus two times v over no sorry not over pi but over r. Yeah, and now we have only uh, an equation with only one variable r and v is constant as I said. So in this case we can easily now <coughs> calculate the. Uh, first the first derivative yeah, uh, derivative um, which means that uh, a prime yeah, with respect to r so a prime would be now r square the derivative of r square is of course 2 r so this will lead to 4 pi r and um, here we would get um, the derivative of 1 over r is minus 1 over r square. So here we have to write now minus 2v over r square. And in order to calculate the optimal value for r, uh, this is the, the condition is that the slope of this tangent is actually 0. Yeah? So then we have an optimum. So now we have to set this equal to 0. And now uh, the only thing which we have to do is... Uh, solving this equation for r and uh, yeah then we, we can do this in the following way first we can uh, place this term here on the right side so we can write here 4 pi r equal 2 v over r square and uh, yeah then we can multiply this with r square and we can directly also um, divide it by 4 pi which gives an 1 over 2 here so at the end, uh, this gives uh, r to the power 3 equal v over 2 pi. And now we have to only calculate here, as you can see, we have r to the power 3. So we have to, um, we have to calculate the third root of that. So at the end, this gives r equal to third root of v over 2 pi. Yeah. So now we have a direct relation between r and v. So if our v is given, we can calculate the radius from that, uh, that, that we have to apply, uh, that we have to choose for our can in order to get the minimum amount of material. But this is maybe um, not as instructive as to see the relation between r and h, yeah, between the radius and the height. Yeah? And in order to do that, we can do the following. Um, we have already um, a condition for v. Um, this was here, given as p r, pi r square h. And uh, then we can do, we can insert this here into our v. Yeah? So what we will do, we will, uh, we will now insert v equal to um, pi r square h. And uh, this then leads to uh, r equal to third root of pi r square h divided by 2 pi. What we can also do, we can, we can divide this by um, uh, the third root of r square. And if we do that, uh, then this leads to uh, the third root of r equals to the third root of h divided by 2 yeah because one of this uh, one of this r's actually cancels out and when we do yeah when we then 
when we t then take both uh, sides of the equation to the power of 3, then at the end this leads to r equals to h half. And uh, then we can uh, of course also bring this 2 on the other side, which means 2r equals h. And this is of course the same as if we would write 2r is the diameter of our can, so we can write d equal to h, this would be the same. So what we find out here is actually the optimum value for our soda can for the radius is uh, is that the diameter has to be equal to the height. Uh, and this is of course a very unpractical way of drinking. Uh, so um, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to imagine how such a drinking a soda can would, would look like. Uh, so the height of the soda can has to be equal to the diameter. Uh, so it's, it's, it, you could not hold such a can in your hand. Uh, so in reality, the companies decide not to choose the optimum value, but to choose another value which is easier to handle. Yeah? So although the profit will not be maximized and it's actually it's wasting of material, still it is a better solution because otherwise these kind of cans would not be sold on the market at all. Yeah? So now we have here our, our result. So um, we, can, uh, yeah, we can say now that the radius has to be equal to the half of the height of the soda can. So now the only thing which we have to do now is to find out whether this is a minimum or a maximum. Yeah? And in order to do that, uh, we can do the following. Yeah? This is the last step of an optimization exercise and this is to calculate the second derivative. Yeah? So what we have to write here, um, uh, second derivative. So what we have to write here is a double prime so what we have to do, we have to take a prime and uh, calculate another derivative here. Uh, so um, with respect to r, which means this r vanishes here, so 4 pi remains. And here we would get plus 2v over r to the power 3. Uh, so um, when we do that, uh, this leads to 4 pi plus 2v over r to the power 3. Yeah, and then uh, from from this formula, it would not be directly visible whether we have whether um, um, the, the second derivative is always larger or smaller than zero. Yeah. So what we can do, uh, we can check the value that we have calculated. So this is the relation between r and v, the optimum value that we have calculated before, and this we have to now insert into our equation that we have uh, calculated. Yeah. So what we do. Uh, we have to write here 4 pi plus and then um, um, when we insert r to the power 3 over v di divided by 2 pi yeah and we insert this here into this equation this makes it very simple actually so we directly get 4 pi plus 2 pi yeah and this results in 6 pi yeah and this is of course always larger than zero. And when the second derivative is larger than zero, it means we have a minimum. And if it would be smaller than zero, then we have a maximum. And this is the way how you can actually find out um, what is the optimum value regarding, to, um, yeah, regarding the radius of a soda can and to find out that this is really a minimum and not a maximum. And whatever optimization uh, exercise you get in your school or studies, um, the, the way how you calculate uh, these values is always the same. You first have to actually, uh, you first have to write down the first order condition. Yeah? In this case, this was the surface. Then you have to um, insert the second order condition with something which is constant. Yeah? So you have at the end only one variable that we have to optimize. And um, then you have to calculate the derivative yeah, with respect to the given parameter. And then you have to solve this for this given parameter. And at the end, the last step which you have to do, you have to calculate the second derivative in order to find out whether you have a minimum or maximum. And if the second derivative is larger than zero, then you have a minimum. Or if it's smaller than zero, you have a maximum. Okay. And this is everything which I want to show today. Uh, I hope that you find it instructive. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far and hopefully see you soon for a new video.